Hey you all, I hope your day is going great and in this tutorial we will start by writing our first tests. So the very first thing we need to do is set up a file called pytest.ini and this file just sits in the home directory and this is where we are going to tell pytest where our settings file will be located. So start with pytest in these square brackets and then you can specify the Django underscore settings module and I'm just going to set it to testing dot settings which is my standard settings file right here and if I were in production now I would probably create another one just for testing because you know if you're sending out emails or something like that it could mess up but um that would be fine for now and then we can go into the product and first of all create a new folder and call it tests which is where all of our tests files are going to sit and then create a new file and the first thing we want to test are the URLs so I'm going to name this file test underscore urls.py let's just go back to the urls.py file so you see what's going on so basically we want to test this path right here because this one is just default from Django and we'll just assume that it works fine so we want to test that this int pk path will always work and as you can see we have assigned the name of detail to it so that will also help now while testing and first things first we want to import from django.urls the functions called reverse and resolve and we're going to discuss what they do in a second and I'm going to start out with the class called test urls and this is where all of our tests for the urls are going to sit in this class right here and then we want to write a function and call it test underscore detail URL so in this one we are simply just going to test the detail URL and a very good practice is to have one assert statement per function so if you have more than that you should probably split it up into two functions and it takes on the self and now we can first of all get the path of the URL so set the path equal to reverse detail and the reverse function is simply just the equivalent of the URL in the templates so we pass it the name and then it gives us the path back and as you can see in this case our path is a parameter so that's why we also have to pass it one value for it and I'm going to set the keyword arguments equal to pk which is how we named it and then it expects an integer and this one will be one because that's the standard integer for one object and it's where the auto increment field starts and then simply we can assert that the resolved path dot view name is equal to detail and resolve path basically just or the resolve function in general takes in a path and then from there reverts back to the function so it's kind of the opposite of the reverse function and then we simply call dot view name and assert that we are calling the correct function so that will be it basically uh, for this function and go back to your command line now and now you can run pi.test and it kind of takes a moment yeah and you will see that our test ran through and my goal with this part and the next part will be really to get you guys up and running as quickly as possible and after that we are going to dig deeper into files like this one and understand what's going on right here but I really want to get you up and running as quickly as possible so you can start running your unit tests so next up we have the models which we need to test as well so create a new file called tests underscore models.py and we're going to do the import in a second. First of all, start with the class of test models. And that's just the convention I like to use, basically just with the prefix of test and then whatever I'm going to test. So in this case, we want to create a function and call it test underscore product is in stock. Text in the self. As you can remember in the models.py, we had a function called is in stock. So that's what we are going to test with this unit test 
And now we have to create a scenario where we are going to assert that the function works correctly. So we want to basically create a product instance and as you can see, our result of the is in stock function just depends on the quantity. So that's what we are going to mimic. And we could do it in a way where we say like product equals product dot objects dot create and then pass all of the you know fields manually but that will create a lot of overheat because we really only want the quantity field and that's the only thing that matters with this test really and that's why we imported or why we installed mixer in the last part because mixer allows us to basically just say mixer dot blend and then we can specify the um, the name of the app which is products and then dot the model which is product and then we can pass all of the fields which we want to have fixed in this case it's all the quantity and set it equal to one and now we want to assert that whenever i call the is in stock function on this product it returns true because of course it's greater than zero and that was our definition of returning true so assert that product dot is in stock is in stock is equal to true and now we are going to make the imports so from products products dot models import product or oh, actually we don't need product yeah because we're using yeah we don't need that from mixer dot backend dot django import mixer now go back into your command line and you will see an error if we run it because we are we don't have database access so we can as you can see it already gives us the fix which is to use django db mark and we are going to get into easy ways of fixing that later on but for now just import pytest and then we can add it directly to the class instead of on top of every single uh, function so simply use a decorator pytest.mark.django.db and you will see that we ran it successfully and if we were to assert that this should be false we would we should get an error and we do so that's working fine and then I'm simply just going to copy this whole function and then paste it right underneath and call it test product is not in stock and in this case we want to set the quantity equal to zero and then assert that it's false because of course we are returning self dot quantity is greater than zero and in this case it is zero so that should be false and yeah that works as well now we can also create a new file and name it test underscore views dot pi and this is where our view tests are going to set again start off with the class of test views and now we can create a function called test product detail authenticated takes in the self and in this function we want to test whether we can access it when we are authenticated because as you can remember inside of the views file we specified the login required decorated to be able to access this view and of course we want to make sure that it, it does what we want it to do so first of all we want to test it with the authenticated state and what we have to do in this case is set the path equal to reverse detail and again pass the keyword arguments pk goes to one we already had that and now we want to set the request equal to request factory so we are just creating a new instance dot get which is a method on the request factory object path and then we want to modify the request to pass in the authenticated user so simply set request dot user equal to mixer dot blend user so that creates a new user instance and now we want to gather the response because we're just really mocking the access of a view so set the response equal to product detail and of course product detail is the function which we have inside of the views this one 
And as you can see, it expects a request and a private key. We already created the request, so we can simply pass it the request and then the private key of one. And now we want to assert that the response.status code is equal to 200, so that it ran through correctly. And we can next up make all of the inputs which we need. So first of all, from Django.test, input the request factory package. Then from Django.urls, we want to import reverse. From Django.contrib.auth.models, we want to import the user model. Except what we that is what we are using right here. Can remove these quotes, actually, we don't need them. And then from products.use, we want to import the product detail. And of course we are using mix as well, so from, from mixer.backend.django, we want to import mixer. And now go back into your command line and run pytest. And again, the database access failed, so just import pytest. And then we can add the pytest.mark.djangodb. No product matches the given query. Of course it doesn't because we tried to give it the private key of one, one, but we don't have a product which has the private key of one. So we just are going to make an instance of a product and by default it's going to start with the private key of one. Just mix it up, blend products dot product. That should work now. And yeah, it runs through. And now we want to basically do the same thing with unauthenticated users. So dev test product detail when we are unauthenticated. Oh, what is going on? Yeah, I'm just going to unauthenticated. And the only thing we want to change really is this request or user and set it equal to anonymous user. And we can import this one from the models as well. Anonymous user. And actually it run it, let's run it like this and you will see that we should get a three or two error. And yeah, we do because that's the standard code for a temporary redirect. Because after that, we obviously want to get back or we want to get redirected back to the normal view as soon as we logged in. So the 302 redirect really just redirects us to the login view and from that it redirects us back to the view we actually want to access. But instead of doing that, we are just going to assert that accounts login is inside of the response dot URL. And yeah, it works. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to run the server. And I'm now going to access it on my browser. And if we were now to go to slash one, you will see that we get redirected to accounts login. And all we are doing in the test is basically just asserting that this redirect, which just happened, will always happen with this accounts login in the URL. And that was fine. So I'm going to call it quits for this part. Make sure to tell me in the comments down below what you want to see inside of the series and what I can help you with. So stay tuned for the next part where we are going to dig a bit deeper on how you can measure your test coverage and assert that everything inside of your Django project is going to be tested. And yeah, see you then. Cheers.